Well, hey there, ready to dive into today's market action. We're tackling October 8th specifically. Got a feeling you're particularly interested in the Indian market's view based on the stack of news from Google News India you sent our way. Definitely a day full of headlines, that's for sure. Let's see if we can separate the signal from the noise. Exactly. First thing that jumps out, talk about a turnaround Tuesday. Indian stock market decided to have itself a party after, what was it, a five-day losing streak. Yeah, pretty dramatic shift. Sensex up a whopping 585 points. Nifty back up over that 25,000 mark. Makes you wonder what changed so drastically in just a day. Right. Shows you how volatile things are right now. Investors all jumpy, reacting to every little thing. This wasn't just a blip. Might be a whole shift in sentiment we're seeing. Speaking of sentiment, can't ignore that BJP win in the Haryana elections, can we? Some saying it's like a, what was it, a 7.5 lakh core boom? Bit of hyperbole there, or is there something oh, to that? This is where digging into the why is key. Markets, they love stability, right? Political stability equals good for business in a lot of investors' minds. BJP staying in charge could mean current economic policies stay put too, and that's reassuring for some. So roses domestically, but globally? Hmm. Be different tune, maybe. <laughs> China's been teasing this big economic stimulus, and when they finally dropped it, market reaction wasn't exactly fireworks and confetti. Yeah, expectations versus reality, classic case. Hype was so high, even a half-decent package might have disappointed. Plus, the ripple effect is huge. China sneezes, the world catches a cold, especially markets closely tied to theirs, like India, for example. Hong Kong market took its biggest dive in 16 years. Wild, isn't it? Mm. Stuff happening over there in China, but it has these knock-on effects all the way. Oh, absolutely. Globalized world, right? And as if we needed more uncertainty, there's that whole Israel-Iran situation still simmering away. Oil prices were already volatile, now they're like a... A roller coaster in the dark. Exactly. Traders are definitely on edge, and you know what that does to markets? Speaking of, our listeners particularly interested in the Indian market, right? What's the impact there from all this geopolitical drama? So key thing to remember, India, big time oil importer, any instability in that market makes waves over there. This conflict, huge question mark hanging over global oil supply. That's what's got investors spooked. Makes sense. But on a practical level, should we be freaking out? Like, hide your money under the mattress levels of concern. Okay, so... Understandable to feel a little uneasy when you see these headlines, right? But here's the thing. Market's a complex beast. Lots of factors at play. Stuff like this conflict, yeah, it can cause those short-term swings, but it doesn't necessarily dictate the long game. That's where having a solid investment strategy comes in. And diversification, can't stress that enough. Diversification, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket and all yeah. that. But let's be real. Not everyone's cut out to be a day trader glued to the screen 24-7. What's the takeaway for the average person just trying to make sure their savings aren't, you know, vanishing into thin air? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? First things first, don't panic. Knee jerk reactions based on a few news cycles, recipe for disaster, play the long game. Think of it like a marathon, not a sprint. And if you're really unsure, talk to a financial advisor. They can help you build a plan that fits your goals and your risk tolerance invaluable, especially in times like these. Solid advice. So we've covered the Indian market's rebound, the Haryana election results, China's mass stimulus, and the ever-volatile world of oil. Whew, what a ride. Before we wrap up, what about those individual companies we were looking at? Oh, right. Easy to get lost in the big picture, but those individual stories are fascinating, too. Trent and BL, they were standouts today, performing really well. Trent, remind me there. Big retail player in India. Investor sentiments through the roof for them right now, mostly thanks to some ambitious expansion plans they've got in the works and some really strong quarterly earnings. Could be a good sign for the whole Indian retail sector, actually. Interesting. And BEL? That's All right, Electronics Limited. Whole different ball game defense electronics. Their stock soaring because they snagged a massive order from the Ministry of Defense reinforces their position in that market. So even with all the global uncertainty, some bright spots in the Indian economy, that's got to be reassuring for some. What about the flip side, though? Any companies uh, not having such a good day? Yeah, unfortunately. Tata Motors took a bit of a dip today. Tata Motors, now that's a name everyone knows. What happened there? It's the supply chain issues rearing their ugly head again. A lot of companies, especially in automotive, are struggling with that right now. Mm -hmm. They're working on it, but it definitely impacted their share price today. Supply chain issues feels like that's the story that just won't go away, huh? Any light at the end of the tunnel for companies battling that? Well, it's a hurdle, no doubt. But Tata Motors, they're a resilient bunch got a strong foothold in the market, and they're actively tackling these challenges. 
Today's dip is something to note, sure, but analysts still seem cautiously optimistic about their long-term prospects. So some bumps in the road, but overall still potential in the Indian market. What a day, though. Anything else before we wrap this deep dive up? You know, before we move on, something's been bugging me about this China stimulus thing. Okay, what's that? We talked about how it might impact India, but for our listener, the one really keyed into that Indian market, what are the like the concrete implications? Ah, you're asking the right questions. Here's the thing. They're pumping money into infrastructure mostly, not so much directly into consumer spending. Which on the surface sounds got good. Right, you'd think so. But investors, some of them, they were hoping for a more aggressive push to get people buying. This infrastructure focus could mean less demand for stuff India exports to China. Something to watch if your portfolio is heavy on those kinds of companies. It just blows my mind how one decision over there sends these ripples. It's a global market, that's for sure. It really is. Yeah. It makes me think. We've gone from elections in Haryana to China's economy all in one day, and it's all affecting India's market. Can we even analyze India in isolation anymore? Or are these global factors just inseparable now? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? The world's getting awfully small, that's for sure. It makes you think. Well, this has been quite the crash course, I gotta say. Macro trends, company specifics, we covered a lot of ground. Appreciate you breaking it all down with me. My pleasure. Always fun to dig into the nitty gritty, especially with someone as curious as you. And to our listener, Hope this deep dive's giving you some things to chew on as you navigate these uh, interesting market times. Until next time, happy investing.